Hi, how are you doing today? And welcome to Tree of Life Tarot. Um, I wanted to put together an introduction video kind of explaining um, how I go about reading the tarot and um, some of the objects that you see that I use um, to uh, kind of harness my intuition and um, connect with the divine while I read. Um, we'll get started here with some of the objects on the table. And um, here in the corner, you'll notice this cross. And what this is, is this is actually a rose cross. And this is one of the key symbols um, for Rosicrucians. Um, I am a, uh, a newly practicing Rosicrucian. And um, when I came across it, it really resonated with me. And um, I felt like I had finally found what it was that I was looking for for so long. And um, uh, here, I'll go ahead and give a brief explanation of the Rose Cross. So here in the Rose Cross, it's almost like we have the um, representation of the Tree of Life, like the three pillars. So one here, one up the center, and one to the left. Now, this would be mercy, severity, and then the middle pillar. And the middle pillar path is where the rose represents the blossoming of your divine consciousness. And then, like up here, you would have the crown, you know, where you would um, graduate to the, the divine source. But uh, this is um, something that inspires me, and I enjoy meditating on it. And um, uh, if it seems interesting to you, I implore you to look into uh, the Rosicrucian Order and uh, check out what they have to offer. Um, moving on, um, the two candles that sit on the outside are also a representation of the two outer pillars of the Tree of Life. Um, this candle, when it's lit, looks purple, but when it's out, it's actually blue. And the blue is to represent the right pillar, um, mainly chesed, which is mercy. And then I have a red candle here that I light, and that is a representation of the left pillar, which is severity. And then I keep a tea light candle lit in the middle to um, illuminate that middle pillar path to divine consciousness and intuition and um, getting in flow with the uh, natural laws. Um, moving on over here, I uh, keep an incense burning while I read. Um, incense have been used um, and spiritual practices going all the way back to ancient times. And something that um, really resonated with me was, if you recall the Ark of the Covenant, um, the people that were allowed into the inner temple, you know, the most sacred place, the Holy of Holies, um, and, and were allowed to witness the actual Ark, would commonly state that there was a mist about it, you know, like a fog. Um, and they always related that with the essence of the divine, like that was the divine presence. So you have the word essence, you know, and incense. So um, the practice is to burn the incense to create the essence of the divine. And um, it's a strange phenomenon to me that um, I also burn this incense and uh, actually use the setup um, during my meditations. And since I've been doing that, um, anytime I smell an incense, I just, I get this feeling inside myself that takes me back to those feelings and those thoughts and um, those places I go to um, on the astral plane when I meditate. And I really enjoy that. I think that's that's wonderful. So moving on down here, I have a pine cone. Now going back to Egyptian times, um, the pine cone is a symbol that was illustrated to depict the penal gland. And the um, 
opening up of the penile gland as an uh, activation of your third eye. So like your uh, psychic connection, your intuition, um, clairvoyancy, maybe even if you're well practiced, but um, that's the representation of the uh, pine cone when I read. Now we'll move on to the cards. I use a traditional tarot deck for the core of the readings. And um, I do clarifications with the Osho deck. They're uh, a little bit more um, pinpointed in description. And um, I find like I really connect well with them. And that they uh, always seem to offer some kind of synchronicity during the readings. And um, so here I have a diagram of the Tree of Life. And I'll, I'll explain now how this tree of life comes into play in the tarot readings that I do. So, it's not really common knowledge yet, but the uh, tarot, the traditional tarot deck, is a reflection of the Kabbalic tree of life. If you notice here, there are ten spears, and there are all these paths that go in between these spears. And there are 22 paths, just the same as there are 22 major arcana in the tarot deck. Now each spear is numbered from 1 to 10. And each spear numbered correlating with a number card of the minor arcana. And if you look here, the tree of life actually breaks down into three worlds or three realms. So we have the upper realm here and then the upper realm would be dedicated to your kings, queens, and aces. Your ace being the top spear, the crown, Kether, and then your queen being the second or the third spear, the Na, and then your king being the second spear. They represent this upper realm. And then here we have a middle realm. And this middle realm is represented by the knights. So here we have a level of mastery. And then we have like an intermediate level. And then below, um, if you've caught up with tarot and you're, you know, um, learned in it a little bit from watching these videos, then you'll know what follows next, the pages. And the pages are the rulers of this bottom realm. <clears throat> and not to make it sound like um, these aren't good things, because in the, in the Tree of Life, it's much like the idea of Jacob's Ladder, if you're not familiar with it. Um, you could look into it and um, get a better grasp on where I'm going. But Jacob's Ladder was a vision where angels were ascending and descending from heaven to earth, which is the same principle as what we do on the Tree of Life. So everything is ruled by vibration. So because everything's ruled by vibration, everything is subject to change. And we tend to be creatures of habit because our um, small self craves stability because stability brings security. And the small self isn't always a bad thing. We do need that stability. But in relation to the tree of life, because of the law of vibration and everything changing, we're going to find ourselves in different circumstances quite frequently. And that's the idea of climbing and descending this ladder. So in drawing a major arcana card, it will represent the path that you're on. And this, this will depict um, where you're at in your spiritual journey on the tree of life. And then the minor arcana, together with the path being revealed, will tell the story. 
and then we'll draw from the uh, Oso cards for clarification. Um, I do have other videos that are um, more educational when it comes to esoteric and hermetic knowledge, if you want to check those out. Um, and the video, uh, The Middle Pillar Path, The Tree of Life, if you look in the descriptions, there are um, two links where you can download and print um, an empty diagram of the Tree of Life and uh, more of a study diagram which explains what is going on here. Um, clearly defines everything and it's a great foundational knowledge if you want to learn more about the Kabbalah Tree of Life. Um, I really appreciate everyone who has um, watched the uh, Tree of Life Tarot videos. I, I just I can't say enough um, how much it means to me. Uh, doing this tarot and um, learning, you know, about esoteric knowledge and hermetics has really opened me up in life. And um, doing these readings is a big part of that growth for me. So I, I also want to thank you for um, being there to, uh, to listen and to uh, actually help me along my journey as well. So thank you so much. And um, I look forward to seeing you in future readings. And I'm so glad that you enjoy what I'm doing here. And um, peace profound. Thank you so much. Bye-bye now. If you would like to request a video for another sign to be read, just leave a comment. Thank you. Peace profound.